Testament to 1 John, 1 John chapter 3, if you will, and uh, 1 John chapter 3 is towards the end, almost all, all the way to Revelation, not the Gospel of John, but 1 John chapter 3, and as you're turning there, uh, let me just uh, mention some things on the back table. First of all, th thank you for being here, and thank you, uh, Brother Brad, for being here, uh, and I appreciate that, and uh, others, and guests, and uh, thank you for that, that um, testimony, and yeah, that, it is a, a it's certain Certainly a testimony of God's grace and as well God's love. And uh, we're going to be talking about that even tonight. Um, as we do so, um, you know, how do we share God's love and um, the matter of salvation with people that we love, our relatives? And um, there's a little pamphlet from, from John Rice, Winning Our Loved Ones. You know, one of the challenging things is maintaining that relationship with that relative and being able to present something that is confrontational. You're a sinner. <laughs> Because of sin, there's separation from God. And like, you know, even Miss Sarah said, you know, she heard about hell and she got mad and angry. And well, that's a natural response when you're thinking, hey, wait a minute. You're saying that that's where I'm going. But there's hope and there's help and that Jesus Christ died for our sins. And when she used the word saved, that's a Bible word. Saved means to be rescued or delivered from our sin and the punishment of our sin so we can be able to have eternal life. And, and so it, it really does. Uh, I wish I had a pamphlet like this when I witnessed to a couple of my relatives years ago. And um, it, it is a helpful one. And it'll challenge you to win the ones in your home, your household, certainly, but then as well other relatives, as well winning your loved ones. And along those lines, there is, um, we have put the gospel on video uh, in a number of different ways. And one of those is a, a brief presentation it was done in a TV studio, it was really nicely edited and such. And it's a, it's a good visual way to be able to present the gospel to someone else. And we have little cards, and they're, um, they don't have a full tracked on them. It's just a, it's almost like the thickness of a business card. On one side it has a free gift and in the middle of the gift is that funny looking square. That's a quick response code, a QR code. You can scan your phone or your device and it goes straight to YouTube, straight to the video and they'll be able to watch a 10 minute presentation of the gospel. On the back it says, what is the greatest thing about the greatest gift of eternal life? Watch a video explain how you can know for sure about heaven. And so uh, I'd encourage you with this. Think about someone that you could witness to or give the gospel to and uh, you could even scan this yourself. Here's a little hack, okay? You could scan it, bend the back table, and you could be on your phone free. Okay, you don't even have to buy this. <laughs> and then you could be able to text it to someone or, or share it with someone and say, hey, would you watch this video? And in a week or two, I'll just check to see if you have any questions. And so leave it like that so then you leave the conversation open. And even if they don't watch the video in the time frame like a week or whatever, it leaves the conversation open and get it, gets them to watch the, the video and gets the gospel in a conversational style. So we've had several people trust Christ as Savior as a result of this. And uh, that's a good way to witness to your relatives as well. Uh, but certainly to even people that uh, that you're just out and about. I handed out his tracks and I have yet had someone even reject one of those. And so very, very thankful. And many times that we're at a fast food restaurant or wherever, people will scan it and they're watching it on their phone while they're in line. And it's just quite incredible. So it's a real good tool. There are a lot of other resources back there to help your Christian life. One is prayer, ask, and receiving. I highly recommend this. It will change your prayer life if you read it with an open heart, believing uh, what God has said about prayer. It will change. It's one of those things. Um, there's, there's a few topics or subjects if I could read a book every year about, it would be soul winning, the family, in the matter of prayer. <laughs> I cannot learn enough about those three subjects or these topics. I just feel like I'm in inadequate in all of them, uh, even though uh, I would read uh, books in that way. But uh, it really does help you understand and believe the Word of God. Uh, speaking of the Word of God, let's look at 1 John chapter 3. Let's stand, if you would, out of respect of God's Word. 1 John chapter 3, look, if you would, all the way to the end of the cha uh, chapter, verse 23 and 24. Chapter uh, 1 John chapter 3, verse 23, the Bible says this, And this is His commandment, that we should believe on the name of His Son, Jesus Christ, and love one another as He gave us commandment. So it's a twofold commandment. 
to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. Believe, Bible believing, is dependence upon him. Not just for salvation, but for every aspect, certainly, of the Christian life. So to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and to love one another as he gave commandment. Now look at what happens in verse 24. And he that keepeth his commandments, what commandments? To believe on Christ and to love one another dwelleth in him, that's dwelling in God, and he, God, dwells in him, the believer. And hereby we know that we that he, God, abides or abideth in us by the Spirit which he hath given us. The title of the message tonight is A Constant Channel. A constant channel. Let's pray and ask the Lord to help us. Father, thank you for speaking to our hearts last night. Thank you for working in our hearts. And Lord, we recognize already tonight that you're working in our hearts. Lord, and you're speaking to us about the love of God. You're speaking to us about your grace and so many other things. Lord, I pray you'd help us to openly receive all that you have for us. And Lord, help us to be channels of your life and your love to others. Fill me with your spirit. Lord, I pray that anyone here that does not know Christ, as Savior would tonight trust Jesus and Him alone for salvation. I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you for standing. You may be seated. As was mentioned before, uh, I get to go back to the place called the Bill Rice Ranch in Murfreesboro, Tennessee, and they have uh, about 40 head of horses. It's a full working horse ranch, and there's 1,300 acres, and they're constantly moving uh, horses from one field to the other, and, and very rarely I would help in any type of form. Uh, typically, for me, it's taking videos or pictures of them while they're moving them, and I've seen them move them from one pasture to another. And at each uh, pasture, there's fences, and they're actually crossing a paved road in the middle. And so, in order to get from this pasture, let's say, over to this pasture, two things have to happen. They have to have open this gate, but then they also have to open the second gate. <laughs> and uh, so, both gates have to be open. Um, if you open the first gate and you ran the horses through, they couldn't get into the second pasture and they would go to the road and bad things would happen, go down the road. And we've seen that before. <laughs> and that's not a good thing. So you have to have the second gate open. If you don't have the first gate open and the second gate is open, it does no good. They can't go through anyway. You have to have the channel, that small section, both gates open. Tonight we're going to see and connect with what we learned last night about abiding as the branch abides in the vine. There's two gates that need to be constantly open in our life. First is the gate towards Christ. That is the gate of abiding in Him. The second is the gate towards others. And that is loving other people. Both of these gates are meant to be open. We're constantly commanded to be a channel, not a reservoir, not a standing still, not something that's just selfish on our own. We need both the gate open towards God, towards the Lord Jesus Christ, abiding and depending upon Him, and then the gate of God's love to others and loving other people. As we look at this passage, look at, again at verse 23. First John chapter 3, verse 23, it says, And this is His commandment, that we should believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, on the name of the, His Son, Jesus Christ, and love one another. Again, I don't believe that it's just simply believing on Jesus Christ for salvation, but it's believing on Him for so much and everything that we have in the Christian life. Will you keep both, gate, both gates open tonight. We won't revisit John chapter 15, but where it did say, I am the vine, ye are the branches, he that abideth in me, and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit. God wants you to depend upon the vine. We said uh, abiding means to remain, means to, means to stay, but this spiritual application of remaining or staying connected to the branch is the decision of dependence. A 
Abiding is relying on Jesus Christ. That deep restfulness, God, I'm trusting you and the Lord Jesus Christ to live in me and through me. As that happens, what we need to do is we start to open the channel. Look, if you would, hold your place in 1 John. We're going to come back to 1 John, but look at John chapter 7. This is the Gospel of John, John chapter 7. In John chapter 7, uh, notice, if you will, in verse 37 that Jesus again is going to be talking about the Holy Spirit and uh, the Spirit of God that's going to be coming. John chapter 7 and I have the wrong passage of scripture is it uh, no I'm no I'm in the wrong book It's Luke okay if I get to John that would be helpful <laughs> John chapter 7 there we go I was looking at Luke and I wasn't finding the right verses okay John chapter 7 find verse 37 uh, the Bible says here it says in the last day in that great day of the feast, Jesus stood and cried, saying, If any man thirst, let him come unto me and drink. He that, what's the next word? Believe. He that believeth on me, as the scripture has said, out of his belly shall flow, watch this, rivers of living water. Who's he speaking of? What is he speaking of? Well, he tells us in a parenthesis here in verse 39. But this spake he of the Spirit, which they that believed on him should receive. For the Holy Ghost was not yet given, because that Jesus was not yet glorified. Ah, we heard about last night that the Holy Spirit was given at the day of Pentecost. And then when it talks about Jesus is glorified, that means he's ascended after his resurrection. Okay, now the Holy Spirit's given, and now we are the recipients. Everyone here that trusts Jesus Christ as Savior, every person here that is saved has the Holy Spirit inside of them. At this point now, God wants you to be a channel, depending upon Him. Believe on Him, and out of His belly shall flow rivers of living water. You are uh, commanded and meant to be, intended to be, a constant river that's flowing. It says, out of your belly shall flow rivers of living water. Now, it didn't say a, a lake. It didn't say uh, a reservoir. You know, if you have an inlet and all you have is it comes in and there's no outlet to that lake, what does it, what does it become? It becomes like the Dead Sea. <laughs> the Dead Sea has all this water and nutrients and minerals coming in and it's, I heard, it's so dense with the salt and the minerals that you can float on there. You, can, you can't even really sink. I think anybody, I mean, you, you say, I'm the worst swimmer. I sink like a rock. Not in the Dead Sea. You could swim just great. Very buoyant because it's so thick. Well, it's dead because it has no outlet. And what we need to see is God wants us to be a constant source. Think of it this way. You are not a battery. Okay, I have a device I have right here. Uh, this has my notes on it. It has a battery. It's at 79%. And the battery life determines how long I preach. So you got a long ways, folks. 79%. You're like, okay, hey, can you speed that up, turn it up brighter? No, no, no. <laughs> and uh, so, so I have the battery. So now I connected it to a source, it charged the battery, but now it's disconnected. Okay, for us, there's no battery. We're like, well, it'd be great to, in this revival meeting, get our batteries recharged. No, that's thinking incorrectly. Because we're not, we have no capacity of keeping a spiritual charge apart from Christ. So, the only way for us to have brightness or light or to even work is to be constantly plugged into the source. Unlike the iPad, as soon as we disconnect from the power source, you know, this thing keeps going because it has a battery. But us, it's just darkness. It's just black. It's nothing. The constant abiding in Christ <clears throat> is absolutely important. But a river not only has an inflow of constantly connected there, it has an outflow. 
You see, God wants us to constantly be connected. Uh, think of another illustration. I, I've been to California, and, um, um, and I made it. I survived, actually, out of the state. And, uh, but I've been, actually, to San Francisco a couple of times. And one of the times, uh, my son and I, we went on the trolley car. And it's one of those electric things. And uh, you're going up the hills and everything and down through those things. And they actually, I guess it's connected to, um, I don't know what it is now, but at least at one point, it's connected to electricity and the only way for it to get power, there is no engine in itself that just uh, keeps in, uh, fuel, there's no charge. It has to constantly be connected to the electricity. And as, a, as long as it's connected, it goes. And we were going through intersections, and the guy was saying, hey, watch this. And we would go through, and then there would be like this, this the noise would stop, and you know, we'd have like the clanging of whatever of you're your going across, but you could tell there's a difference. He said, during the intersections, there's no connection to the electricity, at, at least some of them, and then, and then it picks back up on the other side. And thankfully, it's enough to keep you going through the intersection uh, but, or whatever it is. And so whenever it's disconnected, it can't go. We're kind of like that trolley car, if you will. There's no source in us that could keep us going. So we must be constantly abiding in Jesus Christ. And we won't go any further because we dealt with that last night. Okay, now tonight, let's really see as a river, we have an inflow, a constant. If we don't have a constant inflow, it's going to dry up. It's going to be an empty riverbed. But a river also has to have a constant outflow. That is where we get back to this loving God and loving others. Go back, if you will, to 1 John. In 1 John uh, chapter uh, 23, again, it says, and this is the commandment, that we should believe on the, in the name of the Son of Jesus, believe on the name of His Son, Jesus Christ, and love one another. Now, 1 John 4 explains to us how we can love and what love is all about. 1 John chapter 4, the Bible says this, Beloved, let us love one another. This is 1 John 4 verse 7. 1 John 4, verse 7. Beloved, let us love one another, for love is of God, and everyone that loveth is born of God and knoweth God. Now let me ask tonight, are you born of God? <laughs> are you born of God? What does it mean to be born of God? It means to be born again. Yeah. It means to be um, spiritually alive. You're physically alive. I can see that here today. But Nicodemus, a very religious man, was told something. He said, when he asked, how do you get into eternal life? How do you get into the kingdom of heaven? Jesus told him, ye must be born again. Have you been born again a second time by placing your faith in Jesus Christ? The only way to be able to have eternal life is to have a spiritual birth on the inside. And that's the only way to really experience God's love. And it explains to this, it says in verse 8, it says, and not only is the one that loveth is born of God, but also knoweth God. This is experiential. This is the one that is fellowship with God, is the idea. Verse 8, he that loveth not, knoweth not God, for God is love. It doesn't mean that you don't, you're not saved. It means this, you're not in fellowship and you're not connecting with him in the way that you ought to. If you're not loving, let me tell you one thing, you're not experiencing the love of God and God himself like you ought to. In verse 9, the Bible says this, In this was manifested the love of God toward us, because that God sent his only begotten Son into the world, that we might live through him. What does it mean to be manifested? It means to be clearly seen. So let's, as we're looking at love, would you make three notes about love? First of all, the demonstration of God's love. The demonstration of God's love. He says here it's going to be manifested. It's going to be clearly seen. You, It's so obvious that God loves you. How? That God sent His Son to be into the world that we might live through Him. He could give us life. Look in verse 10. Here in His love, not that we loved God, but that He loved us and sent His Son to be the propitiation for our sins. Now, propitiation is a big word, isn't it? It's not one that we use uh, just on a daily basis. But the idea means to appease or satisfy. Satisfy what? Or satisfy who? Satisfy God. 
You know, God is holy. God is so holy, there's none like Him, the Bible says. My, my, the attribute on, uh, for the, my worship time today was God's holiness. You cannot, and I cannot, I think, fully understand how holy God is. He is so unique. He's so separate from us. We can't even understand His holiness. God is light, and in Him is no darkness at all. But this God that is so holy is also a God of judgment, because of his holiness, he can't let sin into heaven. Sin has to be separated and sin has to be judged. It has to be punished. So that's why he said the wages of sin is death. The payment of our sin is death, separation from God. But the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. God wants to give a gift. And so the only way for God's wrath on us to be appeased was for our sin to be paid for. Our sin to be completely taken care of. Now, could you do that? Could you do it? Now, it was mentioned, and, and I didn't have plans this evening to mention the place called hell, but uh, his wife did, and so I'm going to mention it, okay? <laughs> you know what? It's true, isn't it? It's a true place, right? It's not unloving to mention it. It's actually, it's very helpful because it's telling the truth. This holy God has designed a place for Satan and all those who reject God's love to spend eternity in the place called hell. Okay, but God's love is that he wants you to be rescued. He wants you to be saved from your sin in this place called hell and spend eternity with him. How can you do that? You can't do it on your own. You know, if you try to pay for your sins, what would happen? I'll, I know what I'll do. I'll be baptized. That'll pay for my sins, won't it? Not one verse in the entire Bible says you pay for your sins by being baptized. Well, what if I'm, what if I'm a really good person? And, and I try to be helpful to other people. I love other people. Brother Chris, I, I love them. And I'll do that. Then I'll go to heaven. No, no, no. You loving other people does not get you to heaven. It does not gain everlasting life. You see, if the only way for you to pay for your sins is to die and spend an eternity in hell. Why isn't there a place called purgatory? The Bible never says purgatory. Never. There is no biblical way they could ever say that there's a purgatory. Okay, why isn't there a purgatory for a thousand years or ten thousand years or a million years? Why isn't it? Because hell's forever. Why is hell forever? Have you thought about that? Why is hell in the lake of fire for all of eternity? And here's the reason. It's because the person that rejects Jesus Christ and goes there declining his love and his salvation will never fully pay for their sin. If sometime they would pay for their sin by spending, spending uh, some time in hell, then he said, okay, a million years, then you're let out. But there's no time. He says, okay, now you can let out. But here, in one precious payment of the blood of Jesus Christ, there is propitiation for our sins. Isaiah, the Bible says this, it says, all we like sheep have gone astray. We've turned everyone to his own way. And the Lord had laid on him, Jesus, the iniquity of us all. It talks about by whose stripes we are healed. And it says in that passage that it pleased God to bruise him. It pleased God? A propitiation for our sins. That is, this holy, just God looked down and saw when Jesus was going through the agony of the cross and all the suffering, shedding his blood, even in the scourging, he said, I'm satisfied. And it pleased God to see that. It pleased God when Jesus was going before those hypocritical religious leaders, and they lied against him, trying to get some witnesses. They then put a blindfold on him 
And then they took their hands somehow and gripped the beard in such a way that they ripped it from his face. And as they hit him and spat upon him, they said, prophesy. In other words, tell us, who hit you this time? Who hit you this time? Prophesy. Jesus did that because he loved you. It was a demonstration of God's love. But God commendeth his love toward us. Now, while we're yet sinners, Christ died for us. Commendeth means demonstrated. He demonstrated his love while we were yet sinners. That same passage of Scripture, Romans 5, says, When we were without strength, when we were uh, enemies of God, He did this. Jesus Christ died for our sins while we were enemies. The demonstration of God's love is so amazing with the scourging and the blood loss that He had. It was so much, and He was up all night through with the scourging, that when he went to go carry the cross, he couldn't do it, but Simon from Cyrene had to carry it. I just read that again in Matthew chapter 27 in my devotions. And I just, I'm just thinking about the reality of Jesus going through this trial, this mock trial, then going through Pilate, then being decided to, to be scourged, they choose that, and then he goes, he scourge, and then he can't carry the cross, and then they take him to the Golgotha, the place of the skull. They drive the nails, which wouldn't be small nails, you would understand. It'd be large, wrought iron nails, and they would be through the hands, and then obviously through the feet. Jesus hung on the cross, shedding his blood for you and for me. God demonstrated his love where no one, no one can mistake in it. Look at 1 John chapter 4 and later down in the passage. It says this in 1 John chapter 4, um, verse 14, And we have seen and do testify that the Father sent the Son to be the Savior of the world. The whole reason was Jesus was dying on the cross when they finally lifted him up on the cross, there were seven sayings that he said, several things that he said. But one of the things he said while he was on the cross is, it is what? Finished. It is finished. All the payment of our sin was finished on the cross. And then the legionnaire stepped forward with the, with the, um, with the spear and went through the inner, fifth interspace between the ribs, upward through the pericardium into the heart, and there came out blood and water. According to C. Truman Davis, an MD, and other medical professions, they say this, that we have rather conclusive post-mortem evidence that our Lord died not the usual crucifixion death of suffocation, but of heart failure as the pericardium filled with fluid and compressed the heart. Jesus died from a broken heart <laughs> for you and for me. He did it willingly. Jesus paid for all of your sins. Do not think that He does not love you. He demonstrated His love. He was buried and He rose again. He conquered that sin and death and He's alive tonight. Can you say amen? <laughs> he is alive tonight and Jesus is the only one that can save us. The demonstration of God's love is He sent His Son to be the propitiation for our sins. But notice the direction of His love. Notice the direction of His love. The Bible says this, that we ought to love one another. Look at verse 11. 1 John 4 verse 11. It says, Beloved, if God so loved us... We had also to love one another. So God has commanded us to love other people. You know, if you could wrap up all the commandments into two things. Number one, love God. Number two, love others. If you didn't have any of the word of God, that would be enough. Love God and love others. But what does it mean? What is this? We're talking about the direction of God's love. God wants a constant and continual flow of the life and the love of God 
from and through us to others. He wants us to be able to do so. Look at verse 12. No man hath seen God at any time. If we love one another, God dwelleth in us, and his love is perfected in us. Okay, what does it mean to be perfected? It means to be completed. In other words, God's love is incomplete unless you are a channel. God's love is incomplete. If you're just the recipient, God, thank you. I'm saved, and I know that I'm saved. I'm on my way to heaven, and I'm abiding in you, and I have victory. That's wonderful. This is great. But we have the second gate closed. I'm, I'm the recipient. I'm the recipient. I, I take it all in. I become a dead sea. Until I love other people, his love is not complete. It's not perfected. Uh, I have a wedding ring. And a, a ring is a circle. It's a complete, perfect circle. It's complete. If it was just half or if it was broken, it wouldn't be complete. The idea is this love is not complete. It is not perfected until we love other people. Are you loving other people and being a channel in this way? Continue on. The Bible says, <clears throat> um, uh, look, if you will, uh, go all the way down to verse 16. It says this, And we have known and believed that the love of God hath to us. God is love. And he that dwelleth in love dwelleth in God. And God in Him. So this love is not a matter of us just trying to create an emotion. It's not a matter of us trying to be love loving. It is actually recognizing God is love. Now notice the Bible does not say love is God. No, God is so much more. But God, uh, love is not God. No, no, no. But God is love. That is this. You cannot have agape love without God. And when you're experiencing this selfless, sacrificial, supreme love to other people, then it's God literally dwelling in you, living and loving through you. And then now you're going to be a channel to be able to love other people. Now, you're going to be able to do other things. Um, <clears throat> I, every night, I, I've had a, a water bottle, and I have one in my seat right there. Um, I used to use an, a water bottle as an illustration. You know, we need to be full of God's love and full of God's Spirit. And I, I take the water bottle and open it up and say, you know, when we're empty, we need to be filled. And, and that, 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 I think, can be helpful, but I think it's inadequate. What God wants is a constant flow. A constant flow. So what we need to recognize is there's two ends. I remember, you know, with our trailer, uh, our fifth wheel trailer, we park at different churches and we have, of course, usually a water hose from the church running to our trailer supplying our water supply. So you have an inlet and then you turn the faucet on and then you have an outflow and that's always helpful to be able to shower and bathe and all of those things and you say thank you. And uh, so I, we'd be able, we're able to have that. But one particular church in Ohio, the church bus ran over our hose and here it is. <laughs> they ran over this part of the hose and look at it. You know, it's just, you know, it's spraying on the parking lot, but it's not coming through now to the trailer. And so on the inside of the trailer, I went to turn on the faucet and nothing's coming out. Why? Because the inflow was stopped. You have to have this in order to be able to have the outflow. Some in here, you have been trying to uh, love other people without having the inflow. If you don't have it connected to the inflow of source, you have an empty hose, an empty channel. You say, well, I'm going to try to water. I'm going to try to do this. Now, let me ask. Uh, let's imagine these flowers are real. Uh, they're way too pretty to be real. Uh, to, and uh, they're, they're fake. Uh, but it, what if they need to be watered? I say, you know, I'm going to water these flowers every day. What if I, uh, what if I watered some flowers and bushes and, and such outside of my house or whatever, but I never connected the hose to the to the faucet. Would it do any good? No. It, imagine you're, I'm watering out there. I say, you know what? Every day I'm just out there. I'm faithful. I don't care if water comes out or not. I'm just going to be out there with my water hose. And I'm out there every day and your neighbors are passing their wave and they're like, what's he doing? <laughs> Nothing's coming out of the hose. I told you those church people are weird. And, uh, you know, and he's out there. You know what? That's like some of us in here tonight. I am trying, Brother Miller, I'm trying to love people, 
but it's so hard. You know, there are people out there, they don't love God. And they don't love church. Man, they're, they're just bitter and they're just nasty. And I try to love them, but I can't do it. <laughs> well, it's because you're not connected to the source. You're dry. Well, I tried loving young people. Let me tell you, teenagers today, they're just, I don't know. They're just like weird. They're from a different planet. And uh, they think you're from a different planet too. And, uh, you know, I try to, to love young people today, but it's just so hard. I just can't do that. <laughs> well, why can't you do it? It's because you're not connected to the source. Brother Mill, I've tried. I'm, I'm working. And I'm serving God. And I really am. I'm doing my best. I know you're doing your best. But you're not connected to the source. And some in here are living the Christian life totally empty. It's like this channel. And let me tell you, that is a miserable way to live. I've been there too many times. Try to serve. Try to do it for vainglory. Try it on my own flesh dependency. And it's just empty. But the direction of God's love should be, I'm connected to the source, and then there's an outflow to other people. It's never, I'm just taking it in on my own and there's no outflow. Yes, we're going to see about accepting God's love, but it's loving other people, loving the brethren. It's loving your enemies, those that are unlovely and difficult. Hey, what thank have ye if you love other people that love you first? <laughs> Why don't you love someone that's unlovable? Do you think Jesus was ever around people that were mean? Didn't like him? mistreated him, condescended to him. He is God's son. And he loved them in spite of all of their wickedness. How about the lost? Do you love the lost? Do you love through giving? Giving sacrificially? It's not yours. It's his resources. And God wants to bless you again with, with more resources as you're giving. God will give to the giver. He promises to do so. How about being patient? Long-suffering. You know what long-suffering is? It's the opposite of short-suffering. <laughs> you know, you have a short fuse. When we were kids, we would have, um, you know, firecrackers and, and uh, you know, fireworks. And, and sometimes we had a short fuse. But, man, we'd still light it because we spent 50 cents on that thing. And we're going to light it. And you got to light it and run because it's got a short fuse. Yeah, watch out. Dad, Dad has a short fuse tonight. Mom has a short fuse. Don't go near Grandma and Grandpa, man. Uh-uh. Short fuse. Are you long-suffering and patient? You know, you can't be without the love of God. Loving others, granting forgiveness. How about people that get on your nerves? <laughs> Kindness to those who are not doing right. The direction of God's love is from Him through us to others. Out of your belly shall flow rivers of living water. Love is giving of yourself sacrificially. Don't go through life this direction. I want this and I want that. Oh, give me that. No, I need... Okay, what can you give me? But no, I want to give to others. I want to serve. I, I want to give of myself, my time, my resources. How can I be a help? And you know what God does is He continues to give you supply as you're giving direction and you're directing God's love to other people. Is there someone that you need to love tonight? Is there someone you need to forgive tonight? Is there someone you need to ask for forgiveness tonight? Is there someone you need to share the love of God with? You say, that is the person. If I love them, I would share God's love. Would you notice the demonstration of God's love? It's Christ for the propitiation of our sins. The direction of God's love is from Him through us to others. That's what perfects it and completes His love. But notice as well the decision of God's love. The decision of love. The decision on our part is this. To accept and to continue His love. But we have to accept it. You know... As, a, as someone here that perhaps you don't know that you're on your way to heaven, if I ask tonight, do you know 100% sure if you died that you're on your way to heaven? If you don't, tonight would you accept God's love and His gift of eternal life through Jesus Christ by placing your faith in Him? But even as a Christian, 
What do we need to do? One of the biggest things that is holding people back from really serving and really being able to live in a gracious, victorious way is not accepting God's love. Because I did this in the past, just like the testimony that we heard this evening. Because I have this in my closet back here. Is it forgiven? Did you confess it? Is it under the blood? Then accept God's love. Accept His forgiveness. Continue on. Trust what God says. I'm cleansed from all unrighteousness. I have His life. I have His love to me right now. God loves you if you did nothing right the rest of your life. God loves you if you failed every single day of your life. Would you see God's love tonight? Would you accept it? There's so many in here, we look at our own lives and we have a low self-worth. Well, I'm a mistake. I can't do anything right. Maybe even a, a self-rejection. God didn't make me right. There's young people in here tonight. Listen, young people, could you look this way? You know, one of the, most, one of the biggest decisions you ever could make is this, is accepting the way God made you. He did not make any mistake whatsoever. You say, well, I'm, I'm a mistake in my family. My family situation is messed up. No, it's not. Uh, I, I'm a mistake how God made my features, my physical being. No, it's not. God made you male. God made you female. God made you the exactly the way you are. And he decided that when you were even in the womb, God knew it. And He loves you. He has a plan for you. You cannot even imagine how much God thinks about you. Would you accept God's love? Would you see tonight that God loves you so much and just accept it? Now, when we do that, and we have our cup is going to overflow. It's not like it's hard. I'm gonna. I've got to love other people. I've got to love this person. I've got to be nice to pastor. You know. Oh, it's just so hard. <laughs> I've got to do this. No. When we are accepting God's love, it's, there's an overflow and there's rivers of living water. Have you, ha, how many here have ever been to Niagara Falls? Have anybody here? Okay, wow, a number of you. Niagara Falls. I, when we first went to Niagara Falls, we off in the distance saw steam. I thought it was from factories, but it was, it was the vapor and everything from the falls. I'm like, whoa, it's incredible. We were on the American side first and, and saw the American Falls and such. And we saw, we saw the, the Horseshoe Falls from the American side. But really, it's best if you see it from the Canadian side. And, uh, and we went over to the Canadian side. We stayed a night over there. And it was just incredible. And uh, we, we went over there and we, we um, went down the, the elevator and we went out to the, the little cave part underneath the, uh, there and we're going down and they said um, now as you exit the elevator uh, to the left was where the um, make sure you go to the right because where the left is where it caved in. I'm like oh thank you that helped me and uh, and so we went off to the right and then we went there and just like where we stopped to where the Niagara Falls was I don't know it's like 10-15 feet or something like that and the falls are just I mean just incredible power and uh, and then we went around to a little viewing platform. We put on the ponchos and everything because you're gonna get wet. You just you're gonna get wet. And uh, you know the mist and you know sometimes it was a major spray. It was actually getting on us. And and I was there and I saw the boat. You know the ferry whatever that goes up near it. I'm like oh that would be cool. We didn't do, get to do that. But what if I did that? I had a water bottle with me and my water bottle was getting a little low. I thought I wonder if I could fill up my water bottle. In Niagara Falls. You know, just get it kind of close. Do you think there'd be enough water to fill up the water bottle? <laughs> yeah, I think so. What would happen? I put my water bottle on. Phew, no water bottle. Phew, no arm. You know? I mean, it's just, I mean, the power is incredible. It's incredible. So how many gallons of water rush over that? You know, in the height of the season, it's incredible. The height of the season. Um, it's with the American Falls and, and the Horseshoe Falls and all the falls together. It's an amazing amount of water. Over 650,000 gallons of water every day? No. Over 650,000 gallons of water every hour? No. Every 650,000 gallons of water, not even every minute. 
But every second, in the height of the season, all this water dumping over. Now, do you think I'd have enough water in Niagara Falls to fill up my little garden hose? <laughs> then I could water the flowers. No more flowers. <laughs> you know, it, it constant flow. You know, one time I was I was experiencing. I believe that the filling of the Holy Spirit, and I thought, no, oh, wow. If I wonder if I could have the fullness of the Holy Spirit every day, and His love flowing through me, as if there's something I have to generate. No. So yes, I can have the fullness of the Holy Spirit. And His love flowing through me every day as long as I stay connected. I need to accept His love to me and then say, Dear God, would you help me to love other people? Does God, what does God want you to do practically in loving someone else at work, at home, in your neighborhood, in your church, selflessly? sacrificially. Stop focused on self, living for you, but living your life as a channel for others in God's love. Stay connected and be a constant channel. Let's bow for prayer. Father, thank you for, so much for your love. Thank you so much for working in our hearts in this way. Lord, I pray, help us to realize and accept your love and recognize that you died for our sins. You sent the Lord Jesus for us. You, you saved us in such a wonderful way. Lord, I pray right now that you'd help us to love other people like we ought to. And Lord, I pray that you'd meet every single need here. With heads bowed and with eyes closed, let me ask this. Who here would say, Brother Miller, there's one thing I know for sure, is that I am saved. I know that I'm on my way to heaven because... I've already accepted God's gift and His love. I've trusted Jesus Christ alone, and I have that eternal life. If you've already made that decision, you've accepted Christ and trusted Jesus Christ alone for salvation, can you raise your hand all throughout the room? I've already done that. That's a wonderful thing. That's a wonderful thing. Great. Now look, if, if you're here and you can raise your hand, I just want to say thank you for being honest. Okay, if you don't know that you're on your way to heaven, or if you've never accepted God's gift of eternal life and His love, would you tonight accept that? So would you, if tonight you want me to pray for you, would you say, would you pray for me? I don't know if I died if I go to heaven. I don't know if I have eternal life. I've never truly, really understood and accepted God's love and His gift of eternal life through Jesus Christ, would you pray for me? I'm concerned about this place called eternity, and, and I want to accept God's gift of eternal life. Anyone like that, say, would you pray for me? Would you slip your hand up high enough where I could see it? Would you just slip it high enough? I need to accept God's gift of love, uh, of eternal life, and His love. Anyone like that? Okay, let me ask next. Who here would say, Brother Miller, I have been saved. I know I've received God's love, but I need to constantly be dependent now, I need to be constantly loving. I see for me, the first thing is, I, have, I, stay, I come disconnected. And I think like I'm a battery, but I'm not. I, I, I'm just an extension cord. <laughs> I'm just a water hose. I, I need a constant. God spoke into my heart about even recently about not constantly staying connected to Christ as my source. That's the first thing for me. Constantly staying connected to Christ as my source. If that's true for you, would you slip your hand up? Say, that's me. God's spoken to me. God bless you. Amen. Let me ask next, as an outflow, who here would say, you know what? I've been keeping the second gate closed, and I haven't been loving others like I ought to. I receive God's love, and, and I, I do stay connected oftentimes, maybe not like I ought to, but I recognize I haven't truly been selflessly loving others, and God spoken to me about loving the lost, being patient, granting forgiveness, kindness, loving my enemies, loving those that are unlovable, just being that channel of God's love to overflow. And you say, that's, 
what God spoke into my heart. I need to be that overflow river of life and love to others. If that's true for you, can you raise your hand all throughout the room? God bless you. Praise the Lord. Number of hands. Number of hands. Would you, would you look this way? It, would you, you can look right here. In just a moment, we're going to stand. And after we stand, I'll pray and then we'll have the pianist play. On that very first note, if God spoke in your heart, why don't you just pray about that decision that God spoke in your heart about, especially about loving others. And you can have a seat where you are or find a place to pray about that. But during that time, if you don't know that you're on your way to heaven, you can step to the front and talk to Pastor or myself, and we can share with you the, the, the truth about the gift of eternal life. And you can know for sure that you're on your way to heaven. I pray that you'll do that. Everyone standing, let's bow for prayer. Everyone standing. Father, thank you for your help. Thank you for your love and certainly uh, your message tonight to us. Lord, I pray you help us to respond, Lord, in the right way. Lord, help us to love others like we ought to and depend upon you as our only source. God, help us to be that channel of, uh, of rivers of living water, I ask to other people. With their heads bowed, with their eyes closed, as the pianist plays, would you just pray about that decision right now? As you're praying about that, if you're here and you don't know for sure that you're on your way to heaven, if you're not sure about that eternal life, would you just say tonight, that's what I need. I need to accept God's gift of eternal life. another verse. Thank you very much for listening to the message. It's a powerful one. And you know, maybe you're not, you know, maybe you struggling with your salvation. And that's something that you need to deal with. You know, there's a of course there's a resource on the back table, of course, but uh, we would love to have, help you with that as well. Uh, because it's good to have it settled, to know where you're going when you die. I was uh, hope Brian don't, doesn't mind me sharing this. I was on the phone talking with him one time, and he was telling me, he says, Brother, I got saved at a young age. He says, but I got away from the Lord. He says, I was doing things I knew was wrong. He says, I came into church a few times, and my hair was so long, and it seems like every time I came into the church, the preacher would always change his message to preach on long hair and why it was wrong. And, you know, every single time I'd walk out the door, somebody was counseling with me about my long hair. And he said, you know, I stopped coming to church for a while. And he says, my sister, uh, he says, we got a new pastor. I want you to come hear him. And he hesitated. But he said, okay, I, I want to come. He says, but if he mentions anything about my hair, it'll be the last time I step foot into church ever again. And he said, that pastor came in. He said, he came in. He listened to the service. And at the end of the service, he said, that pastor came down to him, put his arms around him. He said, brother, I love you. And he said, it changed his whole perspective. And you know, I bet there's a lot of people that are like that, and waiting for somebody to say something about them, what they look like, <laughs> and what they're acting like. So I dare them to say one thing. I'm, I'll never come back to church again. They just need somebody to love them. I want to challenge you with that fact. Brother Dwight, would you mind closing us out in a word of prayer? Good. All the time. And all the time. God is good.